it seems that knowledge of the psychotropic properties of the plant had been lost, at least as far as official science was concerned. It became a hidden secret knowledge. Only people who really had a good knowledge of plants and their healing powers continued to use the plant. And having a good knowledge of plants at that time was not generally a good idea because such people were thought to be witches. They were called witches because they knew about things that ordinary people didn't know about and didn't understand. It was only in the 9th century that hemp cultivation was encouraged again by Charlemagne. In the monasteries, monks wrote their manuscripts on hemp paper by the light of a hemp oil lamp. In 1945, Gutenberg printed the first Bible. It was printed on hemp paper. Here we go. Viva la mota! Viva la mota! Long <laughs> I have a good background, a uh, good education. I had 10 years of college, master's degree in biology, and four years in the School of Public Health at UCLA. So I started putting together uh, a museum. Slowly, people started giving me things uh, they thought were hemp, and uh, I looked around and found things that were historical. Uh, there was a can of hemp seed oil varnish here, and a uh, hemp Bible there that, that I've, I've accumulated, a uh, hundred-year-old flag, uh, and so on. This is an ongoing educational process. I'm learning every day more and more things. People tell me things about hemp uh, while I'm at the museum, so it's very instructive. My mother's a good example. She, when I learned the hemp stuff, I came to her and told her, and she says, no, no, couldn't be, it couldn't be the same plant. I know what hemp is. She's uh, in her 80s now. I, you know, I said, sorry. <laughs> and gave her the book, and uh, she's a believer now. In the 16th century in France, François Rabelais, a doctor and writer, wrote surreptitiously about cannabis in his famous book, Gargantua and Pantagruel. He appreciated cannabis so much that he called it Pantagruelion after his hero Pantagruel. Cannabis, for Rabelais, is Pantagruelion. And this plant has such wonderful properties, as he said, that if plants were to choose a king, in his words, a king of the woods, they would have chosen cannabis to be the queen of plants. Rabelais' essay on Pantagruelian stroke hemp uh, is corroborated uh, by modern authorities. Uh, in particular, I could cite a noted French historian called Pierre Goubert. He was quite convinced that the marked increase in prosperity in the late 16th and 17th century in Western France was due, not exclusively, but primarily to the organization of the hemp and flax industries. Uh, we may remember that at the end of the 15th century, Spain was the mistress of the Indies. And it was, according to Goubert, the organization of the hemp and flax industries and their sale to Spain, their trade with Spain, that led to the rise in births, in marriages, into a general level of both population and prosperity at that time in France. In 1492, Christopher Columbus discovered America and at the same time introduced hemp to the New World. He offered the natives gifts including hemp seeds and cloths. Hemp was used to make sails and rope. Thanks to this crop, France, England, Spain and Portugal could strengthen and increase their maritime power. In 1620, the Mayflower brought the pilgrims to conquer America. In the hold, it also brought hemp seeds. 
A hundred years later, the first drafts of the American Constitution were written on hemp paper. The same paper was used in 1776 for the Declaration of Independence. Cannabis seeds were now also brought into America by the African slaves. The Africans were captured in their own country to be used as slaves in America. They arrived without clothes and were given rough hand clothes to wear. That was a tradition prison uniform. Western countries rediscovered cannabis, or at least its psychotropic properties, which had been hidden from people for centuries during the expansion of their empires, which also introduced them to other cultural influences. The English rediscovered cannabis in India, and the French did the same in North Africa. When Bonaparte launched his Egyptian campaign, the soldiers brought back home many souvenirs, including hashish. The modern history of hashish in France goes back to Napoleon's Egyptian campaign. Bonaparte was almost assassinated by an Egyptian who had taken hashish. That's how our relation with cannabis started, because straight away Napoleon banned cannabis in Egypt. For a long time, there has been this theory in France. You can still hear it sometimes said that the word assassin is derived etymologically from the word hashishin. But if you look closely at this theory, this is not a true derivation. Nevertheless, it has been used to discredit cannabis. What is interesting is that you can find the idea again behind the climbing myth. The West has often made such mental contortions in order to prove the real danger of cannabis. England has been using hemp as a strategic material for centuries. At the beginning of the 19th century, ropes and sails for ships were exclusively made from hemp. But 90% of this hemp was imported from Italy and Russia. The United Kingdom was seriously worried about maintaining its hemp supplies during the expansion of the Napoleonic Empire. King George III of England decided to increase the cultivation of hemp and to develop its production in the seaports along the south coast of Britain. Now, Britport is a most remarkable seaport. Uh, it has been making, growing, manufacturing hemp plaques, sailcloth, ropes, twines, nets, of every conceivable description, since time out of mind. And I use the phrase time out of mind because it was used in the charter by King John of 1213, where he wrote to the Burgesses of Woodport and exhorted them night and day to make cables and ropes of every description. Uh, there were frequent wars with France certainly from early medieval times until, of course, uh, Napoleonic Wars. Uh, and Bridport took part in that span of history. In 1803, the British Navy organized a blockade against France. Napoleon counteracted by signing an agreement with the Tsar Alexander I. This contract was called the Tilsit Treaty, and it especially forbade any export of hemp to England and America, thereby depriving them both of the use of hemp to 
towards their sailcloth, rope, and other hemp 